use a simple topic today. Amen. Uh, do not lose hope. Amen. Do not lose hope. Amen. Is there somebody losing it? Amen. Do not lose hope. I'm going to ask uh, 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 Job chapter 1. We're going to be looking at Job chapter 1 and verse 13 to 22. Okay, and we're going to read it. Amen. Together. So I'm going to ask you to stand with me, all of you in the house, in honor of God's word. Amen. Whatever time we're in the presence of God, we stand. In honor of God's word. Amen. In worship, we stand and lift up the name of Jesus together. Amen. So we're going to read the word of God together. Amen. Um, so we're going to start here at verse 13. Job chapter 1 and verse 13. Are we ready? All right. So we're not going to rush it. We're going to read it timely. Right. So we can get through it and understand it. All right, so here we go. And there was a day. as believers as we are serving God and living for him you know we have sometimes the miss uh, fortunes happening one after the other and sometimes we get so overwhelmed to the point we're asking ourselves where is God in all of this so I use a topic for this um, whole passage I do not lose hope and does that make sense yeah. absolutely because at this point in time the easiest thing to do is really to lose hope Everything that you love, everything that you've ever worked for, everything that you know has been stripped away from you and now you're left with nothing. And so in actual reality, now at this point, where do we go from here? So the word hope in the New Testament is from the Greek word el elpis. According to strong concordance, elpis means expectation, trust and confidence. It comes from the root word elpo, which means to anticipate with pleasure. And to welcome. Elpis is an expectation of what is guaranteed. And how many of us know that whatever God has spoken is guaranteed? Amen. In spite of what we are seeing, it doesn't mean that that is going to be our final place or position. But we can hope means that we can have 
an expectation that things will change. In this season, the Lord told me as I was up last night, because you know, I was trying to seek God throughout the day and I was getting nothing. I don't know if you've ever been there. And I'm thinking, Lord, I need something for your people. I need to be able to know exactly what you are saying in this moment. And while I was seeking the Lord, he spoke to me and he says, in this season, uh, he says, a lot of people are feeling as though they are losing. He says, you are constantly praying but getting no answer. You are at the point of frustration, confusion, and if you will, being tired. Now, you're asking yourself, where is God in this equation? What is it that is happening? Why I can't see my way out of this? For some of us, we have lost our jobs. We have lost our wives. We have lost our husbands. We have lost our children, whether it be through miscarriages or through, through gangs or murder. We have lost everything. And now we are at the point of brokenness and if you will, hopelessness. It's like everything at this point is caving in. And what do we do when we feel that way? You feel like Job having lost everything, one thing after the next. Have you ever been there where you're going through something and just when you thought that this thing that I'm going through is the only thing I'm going to have to prepare myself for, but just before you know it, another news hits and then it's shaking your foundation. It hits you so hard that it hurts to the core. And now you're grieving through things, trying to adjust your mindset and yourself to deal with these things. And before you know it, another thing happened. That was the case with Job. He was told about what was happening in the field. He was told about the oxen. He was told about the sheep. He was told about the camels. He was told about the donkeys. He was told, told about all of these things. And just when he thought that things couldn't have gotten worse, he was told about his servants. And he says, no, this it, it can't get any worse. And just when he thought it couldn't have gotten any worse, he was told that his sons and his daughters were killed. Yeah. Not one of them was feared, but everyone died. Oh, How do we digest that? How do we handle a situation where we are losing everything one after the next? I mean, not to mention a child. Uh, losing one child is hard enough, but to lose all seven at once, it hurts to the core. What do I have after I have lost it all? Job lost everything. I was mentioned here. He lost everything. Looking at Job's life and what he has gone through and what some of us are currently going through is a great reminder, or if you will, a confirmation. According to Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9, there is indeed nothing new under the sun. In other words, there's nothing that we are contending with now that others in the past has not gone through. Ladies and gentlemen, the record shows that God always comes through. The record shows that God never fails. And today we can trust in the God who never fails, but the God who always comes through no matter what. So how do we experience restoration of hope? Because we are losing it. Now, we have no expectations. I feel them, I feel them, I feel them. I know I'm talking to somebody up in here. And we have no more expectation because the very thing that God told us uh, seems like it's not working out. Uh, what do I do when God tells me something uh, and it's going south? Uh, what do I do? Maybe I should just give up. Maybe I should not trust anymore. But the Bible says something powerful. The Bible says before heaven and earth uh, passed away. Not one of my words uh, will pass away. The word of God stands sure. God never made a promise uh, he's not able to keep. Uh, I hear what I'm saying here. Whatever God speak, uh, the Bible says he watched over his word uh, to perform it. Uh, if he has not performed it yet, uh, it doesn't mean that he's not going to perform it. Uh, it means the time has not yet come. But when the fullness of time has come, uh, the God who watched over his word, to perform it is going to fulfill it. Come on, say, wait on the appointed time. Because in the kingdom of God, God operates in timing. And timing means everything to God. You see, God is God. And 
he can do whatever he wants, how he yes. wants. God never had to take six days to create the world. He could have created it in one day. God knew that man would have fell. And God knew that man would have had to learn that things happen in time and season. That's what the Bible says. There is a time and a season for everything under the sun. A time when I declare that waters be separated from the waters. A time when light has to enter the world. A time when dry ground begin to produce crops. There is a time and a season for everything under the sun. And I'm here to tell somebody do not lose hope but wait on your season because God is coming to your aid. It looks ugly. It looks like it's not going to work out but wait on the Lord and be of good courage. In other words, wait patiently on the Lord. Wait until he comes. He may not come when you were expecting him to come. He may not come when you were there. But he's saying, I am on my way and I am going to be here right on time. Wait on the Lord and be a good courage. So how do we experience restored hope? Because it's hard when you're crushed, when you are already stepped on, when you are already broken, when you're at the point where you can't see beyond where you are, because all you're seeing is just darkness. Uh -huh. All you're seeing now is where you are. You can't see further anymore. I hear God say, there's somebody up in here. You have lost the vision of seeing where you are going because trouble has now blinded you to the reality of what hope gives. But God is saying, even in your darkest night, I am your light. I am your salvation. I am the one who has gone before you. And I have made the crooked path straight. Behold, I am the Lord your God. Behold, I go before you to make the crooked path straight. Restored hope, we experience, ladies and gentlemen, restored hope uh, through one thing, through God's word. I right, hear what I'm saying here, Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For everything that was written in the past was for our instructions. In other words, everything in the Bible is written for us to follow. Yes. Are we on the same page? Yes. So everything in the Bible that is written is for us. To follow. It says so that through endurance. Say endure. endure. Yes you must endure what you're going through. Because he that endures through the end. They will be saved. The Christian journey is about endurance. For the race is not for the swift. Neither is a battle for the strong. But he that endures to the end shall be saved. Many have started, but many will not end it. It's endurance that God is working out in us in the process. While we are going through, endurance is important. Amen. That you now may go through endurance and the, and, and the encouragement of scriptures. So as you are enduring, you are being encouraged through scripture. You are reminded when Daniel was put in the lion's den that it's instructions for us to follow. What did Daniel did? Daniel prayed to the God of heaven. God did not appear. God never stopped him from going in the den. But God went in the den when he went in the den. Somebody's afraid to go into the den. But God said, you don't have to worry. I am the Lord God of hosts. I am with you in your den. The lions will not be able to harm you because I am with you. You don't want to face the storms. As human beings, we don't like pain. No one likes suffering. No one likes to hurt. I mean, I hate to hurt. I even hate to have a bad uh, a feel of something negative happening around me. Much as to talk about physical pain or hurt. Uh, but here comes Daniel. And he now he was praying. And, and even though they made a decree, he was thrown into the lion's den. But you have to understand, Daniel had a relationship with God. And Daniel knew God. But I'm going to show you how I know it. 
because who you join yourself to is who you become. Daniel had three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they too was tossed in the fire. And they said, we will not bow, O king. We know that our God will deliver us. But even if he does not, <laughs> I don't have any, don't have any folks up in here who I dare you, dare the enemy. If God does not come through, you can wring my arm, you can, you can break my leg. But I will not quit. I will not let go. I will always be faithful no matter what. That is a place that God wants us to be. The three Hebrew boys were, 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 were so interesting uh, in what they said. We know that our God will deliver. But make no mistake about it. If today is a day he chooses to take us on like this, we will not bow. For to die is Christ. And to live is to gain. So he says here, to be encouraged, the encouragement of scriptures, we might have, uh, so that we might have hope. Say hope. So the, the scripture today is encouraging us to remember that your situations does not determine that you are going to forfeit the purpose that God has on your life. Amen. Scriptures are reminding us that as, we, as others have been in our position and has overcome it, the record shows that we too can trust the same God that gave victory to those persons Amen. that we can look to victory, we can look in hope that better days are ahead. Better days are ahead. Amen. Oh, Pastor, I can't pay my bills. Better days are ahead. Amen. Pastor, my sons and my and my daughters are are, are, are in a place where uh, they are in danger. Better days are ahead. You're in a place where you're sick in your body and you can't get over it. Uh, but better days are ahead because of, the record shows that God delivers His people. Job was afflicted. Many are the afflictions, but the Lord. Deliver some of them. Just a few. No, God is biased. He's going to deliver only one. Only the one that speaks in tongues. Uh, hear me, hear me. Only the one that pray uh, 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 every day. He delivered them all from out of it. Our oh, God is not biased. The Bible says he's no respect to our persons. What he has done for one, he will do it for all. He will do it for all. What you're facing, ladies and gentlemen, in this moment, God's intention is not for you to be bitter, but for you to be better. Everything that Job has suffered was written for our instructions to follow so that we too can endure and be encouraged through his experience. That we might now hope in God. Do you have anyone who's hoping? The question becomes, what did Job do in his suffering? Praise God. Yes. I've never seen anything like this. Some of us, if something goes wrong, let's be honest. The way we behave, it's like, it's like God is the worst of all gods. I mean, just one little thing. Oh my God, we curse our God. And if you're not careful, I'm not even going to church because I'm vexed with God right now. And we think we're hurting God if we stay away from church. We can't hurt Him. We're hurting ourselves. Job chapter 1, 20 to 22. And this Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head as a sign of grief and sorrow. Then he fell to the ground in worship. Uh-oh. Somebody says, I can't worship God, Pastor. I have too much burden on me. You don't understand what I'm going through. So I have to come to church and when worship is going on, the burden is so heavy, I have to sit down. The devil is a liar. Yeah. When you're going to when you're going to burdens, that's when you praise God. That's when you say, I'm gonna dance it. It doesn't matter what comes our way. You know why? The greater one lives inside of me. And guess what? His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner. More than victorious. We are heirs of the kingdom. And we are filled with the Holy Ghost. That's why we worship. I've never seen this though. This is serious. 
I don't think I could praise God though. <laughs> I'm being honest. My seven sons. My feet is consumed. Not only that, but even fire fell and consumed some of the um, the, 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 the livestock. I mean, it seems that God, God's hand, if you will, was against him. But the man bowed down. And in sorrow, of course, but yet in worship. It's okay to be in sorrow. But what do you do when pain strikes? Do you curse God and die? Are you, you say, Lord, I'm hurting. But I'm trusting that you're going to do it. He says, naked am I coming out of my mother's womb. Job, now I, Job, eyes are open. And Job realized, oh my God, after all he said and done, man is just dust. Without God, man is nothing. That's what he says. And naked will I depart. All the fancy cars, jewelries, and all the finances, and all the big bank accounts, guess what? It can never take you into the next life. You may be, I think you're talking to me. 